Stay informed on earnings trends and analysis in Zach's Earnings Outlook. We are powering through the Q3 earnings season, and uh, this week, the week of the 23rd of October, as we sit and speak here, is a big week for earnings, a flood of earnings reports out all this week. And here to bring us up to date is our research director, Shiraz Meehan. Um, let's take a look at the bigger picture, and then we'll kind of focus sure. in on some other things. So, so far, it's been kind of a mixed bag as far as earnings are concerned. Uh, but you say the one thing that stands out to you is revenue momentum. What in particular about that? Absolutely. Every aspect of revenue. Uh, so, uh, the the uh, the overall earnings picture had been getting better the mm. last few quarters, mm -hmm. and this earnings season is a continuation of that trend. Uh, and there's a lot of good stuff, even though you call it a mixed bag. Uh, uh, but the the revenue thing uh, is extremely impressive, and I have a slide that I want to share with folks. And what it's, what it's showing, Terry, is the left hand side part of the slide is showing the growth rate, the revenue growth rate uh, for the 229 S&P 500 companies that have reported results already as of this morning. And the right-hand side of this chart is showing the proportion of these 229 index members that have beat revenue estimates. And you can see the, 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 the revenues are up 5% for this sample of companies. The same sample of companies had 4.1% revenue growth in the previous quarter, which was a very good quarter. Mm -hmm. And then the four quarter average is 3.9% growth. The 12 quarter average or three year average is 1.5%. So a real noticeable acceleration uh, in the growth momentum. I mentioned Q2 was extremely good, and you could see on the right side that we had 69% of the companies beating revenue estimates then. Yep. It's 65.1% right now. The 65.1% is an improvement over any other period except Q2. So that's what the, uh, the improvement on the revenue side uh, is, uh, is, is is showing up. But we're not through yet. We have more companies to hear from. We have more companies to hear from, that's right. So that uh, 65 number could go up. Could go up, could go down as well. It so, could. That's right. So and the, that's where the mixed bag that, comes in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew I'd tie it all up at some point. So uh, show us the numbers. Uh, give us the scorecard. Okay. So I have, uh, in this, this is the scorecard as of today, uh, we now have 229 S&P 500 companies have reported results. These 229 account for 48.1% uh, of the index's total market cap. So we are almost halfway through mm -hmm. in terms of the index's market cap. Total earnings are up 7.7%. Total revenues are up 5%, as we mentioned earlier. 75.5% are beating EPS estimates, 65.1% are beating revenue estimates. And what we are showing here in this slide is uh, comparing the results thus far for these 229 with what we have seen from the same sample of companies in the previous quarter, in the four quarter average, and the 12 quarter average. And, and you could see the earnings growth rate uh, is below what we saw in Q2, mm -hmm. but a notable improvement over the four and 12 quarter averages. The revenue thing we mentioned uh, earlier already. Mm -hmm. uh, the beat percentage is about in line with historical levels. Uh, uh, so all in all, a, a, pretty, uh, a pretty impressive showing uh, uh, on the earnings front. A quick one slide, it's kind of like a bonus thing <laughs> I wanted to show. This is the total dollar earnings in billions of dollars that Q3 is on track. So we are combining the results that have come out with estimates for the still to come. And uh, Q3 is on track, S&P 500, uh, to earn $296 billion. That's with a B. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, in the quarter, this will be a new all-time quarterly record beating the record we set in the previous quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you could see in the coming quarters, uh, this record is expected to be beaten again. All right. And one thing I did notice as well is that the economically sensitive sectors of the S&P 500 have seen some strong earnings 
uh, come out another positive, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's the the uh, one of the positive elements this earnings season, as well as in the recent past, uh, has been what they call is the synchronized global growth. So mm -hmm. all the major economies are are growing again for the first time since the global financial crisis, and these economically sensitive, the materials, the industrials. All of those benefit from this upturn, uh, and that's showing up in the uh, in the revenues too. Revenues in the final analysis track the global uh, GDP growth on a nominal basis. So the revenue improvement is a function of the global GDP growth, and that's showing up in the economically sensitive sectors as well. All right, give me some of the other standout sectors on the flip side. Uh, so the uh, finance didn't do too good. We knew finance was going to struggle. There was the all the insurance losses from the hurricanes. Yeah. The banks uh, didn't really uh, do do much better either. But outside of finance, uh, there's plenty of momentum all around. Uh, we still have plenty to go uh, in terms of reports from the tech sector, but a very strong showing. Uh, we had double-digit growth rates last few quarters. Mm -hmm. By all accounts, it appears we're going to have double-digit uh, growth in, uh, in Q3 as well. You mentioned the economically sensitive sectors. Yeah. All of them uh, are doing good, the materials, the industrials, the home builders, um, yeah, uh, the we autos. Have, we have had some misses by some big names. Absolutely. So the it's... Uh, the, the, the overall environment is good, mm -hmm. uh, but if you are a Chipotle Mexican grill <laughs> and you can't manage uh, the issues surrounding that you should be managing, right. uh, then that's your problem. Uh, McDonald's is doing good, thank you very much. So, mm. so there's uh, always going to be those individuals. There's always standouts. going to be those companies that, right. for company specific reasons, uh, will be struggling. The overall environment for earnings uh, is, is, is favorable. Another thing that's different this time around is recent earnings quarters have seen investors not reward companies much for topping estimates. This quarter, companies beating estimates seem to have risen like two days after they've reported, right? What is that telling you? So it's, it's, it's a couple of factors. Number one is uh, that estimates had not really fallen uh, as much as had historically been the case. And this is something we had been pointing out uh, in the run-up uh, to this earnings season. Typically, estimates for the quarter would fall mm -hmm. uh, as uh, companies would report the previous quarter's results. So Q3 estimates had not fallen by as much. So there was a lot more conviction. So the fact that when companies would beat the bottom and the top line, uh, means even more when the estimate hasn't really fallen that much. Secondly, the tone and substance of management commentary about the current and coming quarters has improved. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the stock price reflects in the final analysis, more than a positive surprise, EPS and revenue, is positive outlook for the for the current and coming quarters, and let's, that's that's showing up. Let's talk about stock price here for a moment. Sure. Um, earnings continue to drive this market. You agree? Sure, to a large extent. Yeah. Okay. That being the case, the sixty-four thousand dollar question is: Can these earnings justify valuations? You know, valuation is stretched. It's not cheap. The market. Uh, has been making new records day after day uh, this year. And whether you're looking at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Index, the 30 large caps, the uh, Russell 2000, S&P 600, any index you look at, valuations are at multi-year record levels. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, S&P 500, I believe I was looking at the S&P 500 forward 12-month PE. Uh, and I went as back as 10 years, uh, and, and we hadn't been as high as we are. Mm. So valuation, it's stocks are not cheap, right? Uh, but valuation is a notoriously bad metric for for, for market timing. Uh, is is the market as expensive as we had in the late 90s? Absolutely not. Given the momentum we are seeing in earnings, 
uh, given the positive outlook for the U.S. and global economy, and given this confidence in the central bank's uh, ability to take away the punch bowl but still keep interest rates low, sure. all of these uh, uh, should convince us and is convincing market participants uh, that there could still be room left in this market, even though the conventional valuation metrics uh, are not cheap. All points well taken, no doubt about that. We still have more of the Q3 season to get through, sure, and we'll right. be checking in with you uh, at least one more time sure. to uh, update us on what's going on. In the meantime, don't forget that every Monday you can read Shiraz's earnings preview. He lets you know what's going to happen later in the week uh, as far as companies reporting and uh, trends that may have changed since the previous week. And then later in the week, probably about Thursdays or so, you can come back uh, to Zax.com and check out his text version of his earnings outlook. And there's where he puts it all in perspective um, up to the time that he writes that piece. With Shiraz, meantime, I'm Terry Ruffalo.